we just talk about the the, the Sleepy Hotel. Well, the 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 project itself uh, was born out of out of uh, a number of meetings that we had back in nineteen eighty four regarding the whole border region and in particular this region because this region is right on the border and uh, it was suffered greatly from the troubles and in nineteen eighty four that coincided with the first ceasefire. At that time. Peter Quinn did a, did a study on the entire border, on the entire border region here, which consisted of, of at that time, nine or ten community groups dotted right around the Slee Bay mountain range here, which we are one of them. So to make a long story short, we ended up with an hotel. We didn't set out to build an hotel. That's what developed out of it. In this small area now, when we were talking about, uh, there's over 100 families, new houses in this area from we developed this. Like, which is a, was a huge improvement because it was being depopulated. We were sitting along the border. We had all the problems that 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 uh, came about from the troubles in the north. This would have been traditionally regarded as a republican area, and, and all that that entailed. So I suppose the whole perception of the place had to be changed. We went. We did. I'd say we did every every training course that was put on the on on the table. Members of our group did it. And I suppose we had a long education. But from a point of view of how, how the hotels run, there's a voluntary board here, a board of directors, and their input at this come and sit at meetings. Uh, I was a member of that board. They come and they are, are volu- their input is voluntary. The rest uh, is all paid. But we had, our di- we had our difficulties and our ups and downs, but thankfully now we have come through this recession and we're starting to go out the other side of it and it is improving. But it is run on a basis, I come in as manager, all staff, and that would be answerable to myself, I'm answerable to the board. For example, this weekend now we have 27 from West Mead. They came yesterday, and they are a walking group. So they came and they stayed, stayed last night, and they were out walking all day today, and they're staying tonight, and they're walking again tomorrow, and then they're leaving tomorrow evening. But there's accommodation there, there's food there, there's a bit of money spent in the bar. So that generates, that generates income for us. We also get we also get a bit of funding through Pubble. We, we provide we provide as part of our social development of the area because our initial our initial aim was to regenerate both socially and economically this area, and we have achieved that. I think we've got recognition. We got a couple of we got two national awards in the tourism thing. We we were runner up one year and then we won it out the, the second year. In '84 we did that we did that survey and there was. Well over a hundred derelict houses in this area. Now those have all been replaced, one way or another. I must say directly replaced, but they've all been replaced, and maybe quite a few along with it. So this next census now will be a will be a, a thing we will watch, and we use it, like all that type of information is used all the time to formulate the sort of plans that you'd be looking at to like um, what you might be doing in the future. Yeah, this uh, little poem I wrote about ten years ago when I was a school teacher. And I should have been teaching mathematics at the time, but <laughs> I decided to write a little poem. So it's about trying to describe the flora and fauna of my native Bragan. I wrote the poem, as I say, and it's called The Mountain of Slave Bay. And it goes like this. The curling smoke from a fum turf fire, it stains the sky of blue, where a mountainy man cuts one turf deep on the face of Altna Canoe. Over Carrick Glass, a sweet sky lark sings out a merry song, while will the wisp curls o'er the heat, the dragonfly is gone. A harrier hovers over Keir Keenan's hill. While away across the bog, the wild grouse calls out, Go back, over ice clock thin there's fog. From Lack and Taggart to Pulnaskal, the gold, golden plover flies. Round Loch Nahira, the wild duck sweep, and small trout gently rise. Over dark Glen Van, the curlews call, 
to the north the purple haze. Near Johnny's well by the dark brown stream, the sheep and cattle graze. Ash frack serene that holds the cross, where the priest was shot by yews, from Tunny Clay to Pepper's Hollow, the cuckoo's voice echoes. The diving snipe whose wings do neigh, that rain is near foretells, while fast across the heather tops the darting swift propels. The wild hare hops across the moor, a beagle cries behind. Ashmore looms high above it all, bedecked in spruce and pine. On a moss-clad swamp beside the lake, a moor hen shy is waiting, while a bumblebee drones through the air with heather honey laden. And Carkness Slattery guards toes glen like a giant pike of hay. These sights I see, these sounds I hear on the mountain of Sleeve Bay. Tis evening late and a gentle breeze across Loch Brathen rose, while homeward bound to distant nests fly flocks of noisy crows. The cuckoo's song is silent now, the hen harrier has gone to bed, the grouse calls out the last go back. The beagle's cry is dead, and bats appear like ugly specks upon a golden sky. A distant bark from a cranky dog, a woodcock whistles by. The hare sneaks back to a quiet den, the curlew's call subsides, and all return to Mother Earth, all to their different hides. I stand and gaze on this grand domain with awe and deep concern. The heather bell, bog cotton white, sun dew and trembling fern, the smallest midge, the red monyog, the haze across the land, and my thanks to him for a chance to see the splendour of his hand. These gems of nature, these simple things, and I only hope and pray that these sights and sounds man will preserve on the mountain of Sleep Bay. It's great. In my lifetime, when I arrived here first in the 70s, there were, there were no buzzards. There was a way of I know they're everywhere. They're actually, they're, they have come back and they're, in every, they're recorded in every single county now in Ireland in that short space of time. There was just a, a remnant here or two in the north end from coast, apparently. They were probably were Scottish, as you know, the Scotland is so close. Yeah. And the reckon they're probably maybe Scottish pair, because what happened was they both, their main pair was a rabbit. The persecution, poisoning, and all these kind of things. So they were gone from from from, from Ireland, but the uh, obviously conditions. At least it's a conservation favourable status now that they're in, that they were able to return, and they're they're uh, they're versatile. They're very left here. That, here, here that. That's them. That's the buzzer calling now. Yeah, it's like a, 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 it can be likened to like a cat up there, a mewing call. It's a pair of quite close to here, right? Imagine it's a short space of time. And if you get good weather like that, they soar around, they soar. And they'll react to any, any other buzz that come into their territory, which is kind of three dimensional. So it doesn't matter how high they are. Oh, here he is, here, look at him. That's, you know, your big bird, I'm starting to start things coming back. Find big bird, you see them? Bootio Bootio is the uh, scientific name for them. Bootio Bootio. A lot of the, the lakes up there now are being fed off the blanket bog. So they are. You have uh, what some people will call underground rivers linking one lake to another. And you have lake speed. So you have the uh, lakes of Trala, which been fed by Lapa Porton, just over to the east of it. And there's another river comes in off the bog. And we reckon it's like Salig, which would be the highest lake on Sleeve Bay, which is just behind or a wee bit north of the highest point of Candy Bottom, uh, it would be a feeder for Dr. Porton and Sala. It also would be a feeder for the Coldbrook River, which rises in the Three County Hollow. And for a part of it is the border between Monaghan and Manor. Yeah, the border actually, the border actually between Monaghan and Tyrone runs through the middle of Loch Sallig 
and then the river running out of it feeds into Loch Abandon and then Borla and then feeds into part of the Black Water. The unique thing about Slee Bay, I suppose, is have the Cold Brook River, which rises up in the Three County Hollow, and it's a feeder. It feeds into the Loch Air system and on into the Shannon. And then on the eastern side, where we were up at uh, Tralaf and the river coming out of Tralaf, is actually what they call the mountain part of the, the mountain water, which is a river that flows through Scotchton, Bound Road, and then at the back of Milton, into Monham. Uh, it eventually meets up with the other part of the Blackwater, and there's two other main contribut or contributors into the black water there you have the mountain water which is coming out of Loch Bradon which is just down below the Pima Cross in Braga just north of it and it flows on ahead down and it comes down into Emmy Hill uh, over the Glass Loch and then at the back of Caledon and it meets uh, then you have the other part of the black water which comes down past Favour Royal and part of it is fed from Morley Mountain over down near Fitna and it feeds, it is also tributary to Fury River which was past Corrick House and Clatter and that there actually feeds into the black part of the Blackwater and they all meet just between Glasslock and Caledon and they're all feeders for the main Blackwater which goes into Loch Nay so, a small wee part in County Monaghan from South Tyrone and East Fermanagh is actually a feeder for two of the biggest waterways in Ireland. Loch to the east, Loch Air to the west on the Shannon system. From that point of view, it's, it's a main stable, I suppose, a main stable the ecology of the whole area. And we don't look at it like that, we just look at it as a a big lump of blanket bog right there where some people can go out and dump their rubbish and just treat it as a dump, you know and we don't use it for what it should be used for I can hear them paraphrasing like yeah. <laughs>